In today's video, I'm going to be answering the most commonly asked question I get in the comment section these days, and that is, should you take finasteride? Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is DJ from Carrots and Brotherhood. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Carrots and Brotherhood is all about helping you build confidence in your hair loss through transparency, empathy, and positivity. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure you click the subscribe button and also click the little bell to turn on notifications. That way you can be one of the first to be notified whenever I upload new content. I'd like to start by saying you're not going to leave this video with the definitive answer from me because ultimately this video is to help you think about questions that you need to consider before you take finasteride. For those of you who don't know what finasteride is, or as it's called by its brand names, Propecia or Proscar, finasteride is the drug that you can take that decreases the conversion of testosterone into DHT, dihydrotestosterone, with DHT being regarded as the main culprit for your hairs to begin miniaturizing and become very small, which you get this thinning hair effect until eventually the follicles miniaturize to the point that they just die. Now, should you take finasteride? Now, this is the question that's really difficult for me to answer for all of you that ask the question. And if I had like a magical way to just give you an answer that's specific for you, trust me guys, I would love to be able to, to do that. But firstly, I'm not a doctor, okay? So anything that you see in this video, understand that I'm not a doctor or physician. And so you take my advice as purely anecdotal and I take it with a grain of salt. Now, me personally, I've been taking finasteride for four months, guys. And beyond a, a headache, which I can't say, was caused by finasteride itself. Beyond that, I haven't experienced any side effects. And I'm being completely honest with you guys, I don't have any side effects. I don't have any you know, poor semen quality. I don't have any uh, erectile uh, issues. I don't have any problems sleeping. Really, that's there's nothing. And, and this is the point that I wanna drive home from the beginning is, you know, it's only a small percentage of men that are going to suffer from these side effects. But the reality is, you know, bad news travels fast. And people love to talk about shocking and sensational things. And that's just human nature. So it makes sense by virtue that most people would talk about the negative side effects, or you would see more people being vocal about the negative side effects of finasteride. Now that isn't to say that the majority of men who take finasteride are experiencing the side effects. But if you think about it, I make these YouTube videos for you guys. I don't experience any side effects. There's countless other men who are in the same boat as me and experience no side effects while taking the medicine, but they don't have a YouTube channel, all right? And they probably don't go to message boards because as you probably know, if you're watching this video, hair loss is kind of a private thing. It's not something you just talk about, all right? The people that talk about it in the message boards is but a small fraction of the greater population of guys who are suffering from it. And this is why it may seem that these serious side effects of finasteride are more prevalent than they actually are. Because again, the people that talk about it are the people that are gonna suffer from the side effects, unless you're like me and you make your own YouTube channel, which let's be honest guys, it's less than 1% of us having heart hair loss that are actually gonna get in front of a camera like this and talk about it. I'm 35 years old guys. That's important to know because I didn't start taking finasteride until four months ago. I was still 35 years old and I have been losing my hair and had been bald and had hair transplants. And it's been a whole 10, 11 year journey for me, guys. Th this is not a, a short thing for me. I've been suffering from hair loss for over a decade. And I just decided that it was okay for me to take finasteride. Because when I was in my early 20s and I first started noticing that I was losing hair, especially here in the front and on the top of my head, I really, I was concerned. And so I went to the dermatologist. At the time I was working in the hospital. I was a medic in the military and I had access to dermatologists. And I just frankly asked the guy, hey, you know, what can I do? And the doctor told me to start taking Propecia, you know, finasteride. But he told and it, but he told me, he's like, there's gonna be some side effects that you could, you know, experience that could affect your love life. And dude, if you're watching, <laughs> the majority of my viewers are between the ages of 25 and 34. I can see it in my demographics on my YouTube channel. Okay, but I know there's still the second largest group of people that are watching my videos. You guys are like between 18 and 24. I was that age and I didn't want to have to deal even with the potential that I could lose something going on down south and the plumbing area. I didn't want to deal with it, man. And I had to weigh the pros and the cons and it didn't take but maybe a few hours for me to decide that I wasn't ready to take finasteride. I would just try to hope that the hair loss would stop on its own. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. My hair loss became more aggressive. And two, well, two and a half years later, 
I was essentially bald. Now, would it have been different if I had started taking finasteride? Uh, honestly, I think about it sometimes. Would I have kept my hair if I had started taking finasteride in my early 20s? Who knows? The possibility points to yes. But you have to understand that finasteride, it's affecting your hormones. And in your early 20s as a man, your hormones are not fully balanced, okay? You're still developing as, as a man, as a human being and you haven't quite reached the point of balance and to go in there and start messing with the natural balance of your hormones that, that's that's something that you don't need to consider lightly guys you really need to think about you know is this the right time for me to do that i'm not saying that finasteride is bad and i'm not saying that finasteride is good it's been great for me thus far but it's been terrible for some other guys and you know it's been just okay for an, another group of guys so what I want to do, I want to challenge you to consider three things before you take this medicine. The first is your age. If you're a young guy and you're 18 to 24, 25 years old, you should spend a little bit more time thinking about whether you should think about whether controlling or stopping your hair loss is more important or if maintaining your male prowess, let's just say that, <laughs> maintaining your sex drive and your erections, even though this is a small chance that you could have a negative effect, a side effect in this area, you still have to consider because you're young guys, you're young and many of us are sexually active at that age and nothing could be worse than hair loss than realizing that you can't get it up at 21 years old, okay? And that's one of those things where it's like weighing the pros and the cons. Is it going to happen to you? Statistically, it points to no, but my guess is if your body is still fluctuating in, in you know, hormone balances, and then you start going in there with the drug that's going to artificially disrupt that balance, the, equilibri the equilibrium that's still trying to be established, you probably run a higher risk of some side effects at a younger age. That's one of the main reasons why I waited until 35 years old to start taking the medicine. Because I think at this age now, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm, I'm pretty balanced, you know, hormone-wise. And so if you're, you know, if you're in your 30s, maybe even your 40s, and you're thinking about the sexual side effects, I can't say, man. I can't say to take the medicine because you're older, but at least you know that your body is not developing anymore in the sense of like puberty and, you know, trying to establish that balance of, 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 of hormones. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to think about is your age. The second thing you need to consider is that finasteride is not kind of a temporary thing where you take the drug for a year or six months and you're golden. This is a lifelong commitment, guys. It's a lifelong commitment of not just taking the medicine, but paying every month or every three months, however your schedule is for payment, paying for this medicine on a regular basis for the remainder of your life or the, the time that you want to maintain your hair. It's not just a simple daily pill. People are like, oh, I gotta take the pill every day and it sucks. Guys, come on, it's like a multivitamin. Okay, if you, can, if you can't commit to taking a multivitamin, or in this case, a pill every day, then perhaps the hair loss is not as big of a deal as you think it is. But beyond taking a pill every day, you know, this is a, there's a financial commitment there. And depending on the country that you come from and depending on if you're getting the brand name or if you're getting the generic, the prices could vary and they could be quite expensive, you know, relatively speaking. You know, you need to ask yourself, am I ready to commit to that? You know, paying money every month for medication or for a drug that I have to take every day because you can't stop taking finasteride, guys. If you, if you start today, and you end up growing your hair like I've, I've done in the back. I got I have hair fibers in right now, but you know, I've gotten pretty good you know, regrowth. Actually, I'll, I'll put a video card up here. You can you know, kind of follow my journey of how much hair I've regrown from taking finasteride. But you can't get the hair and then stop taking the medicine because any hair that was gained in that period of time that you took the medicine or any hair that should have fallen out in that period of taking the medicine is gonna catch up in the couple of months following discontinuation of taking finasteride. All right, this is the ugly truth. It is a lifelong commitment. And if you can't commit to that, maybe now is not the time for you to take finasteride. Maybe you need to push it back until you reach a bit more stability in your life or until you reach a point that you feel like you can commit you know, the time and financial resources to taking the medicine. And the third thing that you should consider before taking finasteride is finasteride may just not work for you. And this is something that's not talked about a lot, but you can go in the comment section of just my videos or even you know, search Finasteride on YouTube or you know, read the comments in other people's videos about it uh, or even go on like Reddit and the Tressless Hair Loss forums and, and read about people's you know, reviews about Finasteride there. Finasteride doesn't work for everybody. It works for the majority of men who take it. 
the majority of men who take finasteride are going to maintain the current state of their hair. Of that percentage, another smaller percent is going to be able to get thicker hair, okay? Their hair is just gonna be healthier. And a smaller percent of that per smaller percent is going to actually be able to regrow hair. And so statistically speaking, the odds of you actually regrowing hair aren't that great. The odds of you actually maintaining your hair are pretty good. However, there is the men are simply non-responders to finasteride. And what that means is they take the medicine, right? and what that means is they take the drug and they experience no hair regrowth, no hair thickening, uh, the shedding doesn't stop, and they just simply don't respond. And you don't know if you're gonna be that guy until you take the medication. Nobody can tell you, uh, hey DJ, I, can, I wish, I, dude, I really, really wish I could answer the question for you. Because some of you asked me, you know, genuinely asking me, which I, I, I really, uh, I appreciate your, your belief in me, but some of you are genuinely asking me if you can expect the same results that I'm getting. And then honest, honestly, guys, I can't tell you that. I, I wish I could, but I can't tell you um, that you're going to be able to regrow hair like I did. And it wouldn't be the responsible thing for me to do to even give you false hope. If you look at all the responses that I give to the guys that ask me this question, it's always the same. My experience is this, but I can't guarantee yours, okay? And you won't know until you try. So understand that when you make the commitment to start finasteride, you may regrow hair, but you may not get anything. You might actually just continue shedding. And that's the worst. That's the worst part of it, guys. When you just can't, you know, the, the number one drug on the market for stopping hair loss doesn't work for you, you're just a non-responder. And that if you decide to take it, I really hope it works for you. Guys, I want you to understand this is not a video of me trying to promote you taking finasteride, nor is it a video for me trying to badmouth finasteride. Uh, it's a simple, non-biased video that says you won't know until you try. But if you do try and it works, be ready to stay, to stay in it for the long haul because it's a lifelong commitment, okay? And be prepared to find out that it just doesn't work for you because it's possible. And be prepared to find out if you take the medicine that, you know, your man parts may suffer consequences. It can happen. And then also understand that it may not do anything for you. And that's the worst, but it can happen as well, okay? So I know this video is a bit long, but I've gotten the question too many times in the last month. And I love replying to every single one of you, all right? Because if you can take five, you know, if you can take a minute or two minutes to leave a comment in my videos, it's the least that I can do to get back to you. But it's just the volume of this question is getting uh, too much for me to keep repeating the same thing. So please, thank you. For, so thank you for watching this video. If you have any more questions, drop it in the comment section down below. Again, my name is DJ from Carrots and Brotherhood. I'll see you guys in the next video.